and uh, and Rajat, welcome to this debriefing session and uh, congratulations on scoring a 740. It's a really good improvement from a 660 that you had. Uh, yeah, thank you, Rajat. Uh, slight correction is from 650, 650 yes. to 730. Yeah, oh, 650, 650 to 730. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the Q50 V40 is for me is in my brain. I think it always gets to a 740. Yeah, I think, yeah, you would have, uh, yeah, my improvement, I think, was in quant. And uh, I mean, I improved in both quant and verbal. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so from 44 in quant to 50 and uh, in verbal 36 to 40. 36 to 40. So for me, that Q50 V40 combination, this kind of hardwired as a, as a 740. And, and I think you, you were kind of unfortunate to get a 730. You should have gotten a 740 for for me. Uh, my target was 7.30, so I, I have no complaints right now for that. <laughs> yeah. I won't I, complain if it's 7 40 either. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. So, so let's talk about your GMA journey. So when did you think about taking the test? Uh, think about taking the test was uh, more than two years back. Okay. And uh, to be honest with you, the, the planning for doing an MBA has been in work for more than five years now. Wow, that's uh, a very long time. Yeah. It's a long time and uh, it's, it's been deliberate. There have been a few, uh, you know, a uh, few events which were out of my control, which pushed it back and few were deliberate in the sense I did push back, you know, on when I want to do the MBA. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I have, uh, so two years back is when I said I will write the GMAT mm -hmm. and I will also go out and apply and, and get into an MBA school. Uh, so yeah, two years back is first time when I wrote and then the score wasn't good the first time as I said and the preparation wasn't good either. What I did, how I approached it was uh, was was, uh, was not structured. Uh, okay. you know, various because you are in a professional life, uh, you are trying to prioritize, you are trying to weigh and you are you know, not really that focused, you are distracted sometimes. All of that came to that and then after that I had uh, some other things which came up which basically made me again push back by two years my plans which is for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing that you know I would have done otherwise so uh, yeah and I gave now again in May, mm -hmm. uh, second attempt and uh, yeah that, that's where I am. So, so let's talk about your first attempt. So you said that your preparation wasn't structured. So how did you prepare during your first attempt? So uh, what I did was I did enroll with EGMAT. That was my very first uh, place uh, to, as far as you know, uh, choosing the platform was concerned. It was, uh, your platform was uh, referred to me by someone. I did my research. Uh, you were very gracious. Uh, I, don't know if, I don't know if you recall, you gave me time to talk to me and explain me. And uh, it was not a sales course, but more of a, you know, counseling. Ah, you did. yes, yes. Yeah. So you may not recall that, but yeah, two years I, I now I, I now recall that I was with that friend uh, uh, ten days back. Uh, I think yes, you guys were there, and yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Any of do we discuss that? So I took the the I took the platform, uh, but then you know, uh, on EGMAT platform, you guys have spent considerable amount of time in putting together mm. pre GMAT steps in terms of even before you get into study and. So, for instance, verbal, you have a foundation course, but even before you get into a foundation course in verbal, you guys have given very clear timelines, expectations, how the preparation should be done, how it should be structured, how you should approach it. You know, things like, you know, spend three days, let's say if you spend three days on, on number properties, uh, then make sure that, you know, you finish your, uh, on the platform, the tutorials and the, the lessons you have, uh, then go to Scholarium, uh, test yourself there come back, practice a bit more, uh, go back and then try. And ideally, I think, you know, so these are the kind of things that I said, I completely ignored all of that, <laughs> you know, overconfidence, I think. So I went ahead and, you know, did all the lessons, uh, the usual, you know, uh, it, it, it wasn't well thought through. And here's my something, you know, uh, was working full time. So I was trying to fit in, was confident that, you know, this is, this is like, because I am in investment banking for last 10 years. So I was a little maybe cocksure about the fact that, you know, I can do this. So I approached it that way and it bombed, it bombed badly. Uh, I finished the tutorial. I did not really use Scholarium to great extent. I, I cheated on the Scholarium by sort of, you know, 
blicking the test and going back and doing a lot of those stuff which gives you false idea of what your ability is right mm-hmm. uh, so yeah a lot of those things i did not do like in scholarium uh, the second time what i did the right thing which i learned uh, was you know uh, building building a foundation then building upon it then building further upon it so you know it's it's, it's a step by step process uh so yeah first time around those were the mistakes i committed mm-hmm. uh then further you know took a longer time i spent on and off four or five months doing it okay. so we'll take a 15 day break and then come back and then try and pick up again mm-hmm. and uh, another important aspect of because the first time in fact i took the live courses as well i mean i took the whole package of egmed so i was not active in those classes i would sometimes attend those classes and skip them uh, the second thing i think often times i saw uh, you guys speak about even during the classes and on the platform was something called a plateau that you reach a stage where you would you know you would sort of you will flat out and that generates a lot of frustration and then it so happens that every time now you're stuck at that spot you just keep and you keep hammering at it without any strategy like you just trying to see that if i can solve more math problems right but that is not what the issue is and i as i said in the beginning of the call i completely ignored all those and 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 you know these are not tips uh, tips and tricks which you guys were sharing you were actually giving a strategy mm-hmm. so i ignored that strategy completely and it it, it, it then of course suffered for it so yeah broadly you know these were the so so then how did this change on your second attempt so uh so yeah uh, i walked away from it i cancelled this course that time the right then and there because the anyways came back uh, i then got into something and it took me now this second time around when i went back to in it i again enrolled with eg math i took the course i did not go off for an all live option this time for the live classes because i was okay with the fact i had experienced them once and i was more about like i'll first make sure that from my side i put in 100% mm-hmm. so the second time around uh, i followed almost to the t every strategy and every uh, uh, the, the suggestions given by your platform mm-hmm. and i restricted myself to eg mat mm-hmm. uh, and then after eg mat on gmat club which which is a plus with your platform because you guys give it that as a combined option so it's not something you have to go so my trust on your platform was intact and it was a bit more extra after i wrote the first exam because when i went and wrote the exam i realized that lot of what came is exactly what you was there in scholarium which i completely ignored so if i had the ability if I, if i had genuinely used scholarium in the way it's supposed to be then if i had shown a 90% ability in any of the sections it pretty much would have reflected and that's what happened the second time i'm sure you have access to my yeah i, I actually i was looking at it like a minute before the call yes so some places you will see that yes there are cases where i have tanked suddenly after doing you know 93 or in, in in less than number of properties and third time i wrote it went down to 6 mm-hmm. but it never went down to 30 you know except maybe in in geometry i guess mm-hmm. uh, but all of the ways you will see that i this time around i did that correctly so i focused one i did the course uh, again did the lessons for concept building mm-hmm. uh, it didn't take me that long a time the second attempt uh, because i had already done those lessons concepts were there <coughs> but i spent considerable in a structured amount on scholarium and after having gotten confidence on scholarium where i could see that at least on the topics where i so i chose to focus on number properties algebra uh word problems geometry and then pnc in that order as far as quant was concerned mm-hmm. verbal the first time around one more thing i which i forgot uh, to mention uh, so was that i did take one suggestion that you guys gave was to focus on esr report so the first test which i gave though i cancelled the score but i purchased the esr report mm-hmm. and i went through it properly i used for how gmat has your your platform basically has explain how to uh, Uh, decipher it so i did that and i identified so i could see like for instance in quant it was average over over this thing it's not like i was in good in arithmetic and algebra or one of them it was average which showed exactly what my preparation was 
in verbal however the first time even with 36 reading comprehension even during preparation was good that's something that's natural to me and also that i did so i was about 80 percentile the first time around in rc uh, sc i was 80 percentile where i tanked the first time around was in cr uh, and exactly again same thing i completely did not had the patience to go through mm-hmm. what your training was showing on eg mat i ignored that in cr i was like at 50 percentile so the second time around i went through all of these i went through with that so you probably manner. got the new cr course too then exactly yeah and the cr this time around was very different also mm-hmm. the way it's structured cr exactly mm-hmm. uh, i think it's uh, oh yeah oh, is it, now that you mentioned it yes i the cr this time was really helpful because it was not that frustrating to go through those lessons <laughs> my weaker section mm-hmm. so i think uh, that showed in my uh, it shows in my 40 now because rc and all i went up to almost 90 percent i and i had lot more rc questions this time around second attempt uh sc i remained at same i think mm-hmm. but cr improved considerably up to 70 or something okay so that's good uh, yeah yeah mm-hmm. so these were the things so i did this callrenium and verbal i did not go anywhere that was one thing verbal i absolutely only stuck to eg math i did not even attempt anything on uh, on g math club or anywhere else mm-hmm. i didn't feel the need and my experience from the first time was that uh, didn't need it e the the yeah the e platform covers it thoroughly mm-hmm. uh, so yeah that that worked for me ah oh, perfect sounds great so how did you go about doing quant uh so quant was uh, was the one that i was disappointed with the first time around a bit more because i am from an engineering background uh and so in this <laughs> you know you do take it a little then this personally that you know if you are not able to and then being in financial sector for last 10 years you should not uh, so this time around i i understood what i had an idea of what what is it that exam is testing okay and i then went back to your platform and i realized first time around i was getting a little frustrated with the fact that you had lot of lot of questions seemed on 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 scholarium and otherwise on test and all Mm. like they do not belong in gmat kind of thing but what i realized after writing the exam was that those questions actually were preparing you more for the language of the question more for your ability to read something and quickly you know uh, form understand what the main point is what the main question of the quant is right mm. so you are not rereading a question and getting confused and writing down so none of that happened this time because i was well prepared in i had an idea from scholarium that what so i didn't take it personally in scholarium for instance if i was not going above 65 70% in random test i was taking mm-hmm. what i was noticing was that i have to use this to build my time skills which was very important which i struggled the first time around uh, so that helped me a lot because i focused on my time skills uh, two i focused on on getting comfortable with the language of what it is and not worrying too much about because it's not really you know you are not solve doing calculus or those are not what i uh, they are mm-hmm. trying to right yes. so I, i yeah i learned that and i as i said this time around i reread and read everything that uh, the introduction section of the platform says mm-hmm. and i stuck to it so that helped me and i also prioritized i did not focus too much on the probability pnc i did it in a very school uh, at a very school level mm-hmm. i did not really delve too much into complex problems i made up my mind that let me focus uh, i focused on number properties and algebra okay and spent after that considerable amount of time after i almost exhausted scholarium i went to gmat club and then i spent good 15 days at least there mm-hmm. uh, and almost uh, you know a 60 70% of their question bank in quant Oh, wow. I okay. By taking tests and quizzes and quizzes and quizzes, uh, yeah, I did that. Okay. Well, that's really good to know. Uh, that's that's wonderful. So now that you're done with the GMAT, what's what's your next steps? So uh, I am now looking to apply in round one. That's my plan. Okay. Uh, good. And uh, I have. 
enroll with an online platform which for last couple of years i have been you know uh, it's something egmat i think one of your uh, it's one of your applicant lab okay applicant lab correct okay yes so, and i enrolled with that i took took up the subscription there mm-hmm. and uh, so last uh, after i wrote the exam last two weeks i have been working on that platform okay so, how was the experience been uh again uh, kudos to you man you guys have like partners which are very similar to you uh, mm-hmm. that platform also you know i can see the approach there it is not a quick fix approach or tricks or you know those kind of things mm-hmm. it's more about uh, the the founder there i think maria mm-hmm. if i do get the name correctly yep, she's maria vishalayas pushing you to think and really go in in you know do those necessary uh, steps about your thought process mm-hmm. to think to come up with those things she has structured it in a very narrative form so although a lot of work is there initially it seems but uh, i can see almost now after i completed two sections in that that it again has the same way that you have done in that hard work then now the next steps will become easier so i'm doing that So so nice thing about that is that if you think about it you know if you have to write an essay or a story mm-hmm. yeah and if you go to the classical steps they the you you'd actually have ideation you'd have um, a, you'd have bulletizing you'll have pre-writing and then you'll have the formal structure and that may seem like a lot of work but in the end it does end up taking a lot less time than than if you just go and write a story and and that's kind of the the process with applicant lab as well so it may seem like okay there are a number of steps but if you the amount of time that you need to create an application mm-hmm. is a lot less because if you if you ask around and if you see people who work with admission consultants they end up taking a month bare minimum and and, and yes they may start with essays and yes they may they essentially may have a a first draft but they do it through four five six revisions whereas and then and, and they change those essays majorly during that time whereas if you okay. start in a structured fashion you know which points you want to convey you actually make that decision up front as to why you want to convey certain points and why you want to leave mm-hmm. out certain other points and then 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 that back and forth is a lot less it's like prethinking and critical reasoning if you really? if you're prethinking all of that work it may seem like more work up front but then you don't really? go, do do the back and forth with answer choices very correct yeah yeah that that's been so far my experience has been i have i have completed in that uh, uh, the long the career vision and post mba plan and a bit of a brainstorming okay. so i can see the so i can i would also recommend that uh, uh, you you actually uh, take a, a, you know just an, an hour to a couple of hours of maria's time or or i think she now has one other uh, yes, this is the next step Yeah. Uh, she has a sanity check so so i have just completed what she needs for the sanity so now i will take uh, i'll upgrade to use that component as well yeah so, so I, uh, feedback's really good she actually will give a video feedback to you and, and right. actually it's very pertinent correct correct yeah you need those uh, checks uh, uh, in the process yes they uh, Okay, so Rajat, how can I help you? Uh, so I had a few questions. Uh, I think when uh, so I have about twelve years of experience now, mm-hmm. and oftentimes the the secondary research you do, like you know, using Google and you read a few blogs, forums, and all, the uh, what I am getting is that. it is a challenge that you will have to address i mean it's a question that you will have to address that why you are doing it now yes if you have had this amount of experience so and you should be or you would be in a position where really what can an mba do plus secondly i think there are practical aspects of uh, for admissions committee to concern that for them the pool of employees that they offer to the prospective employers or the people who come on the campus companies that pool usually is for you know uh, associate level uh, uh, opportunities post mba they want younger younger guys it's essentially the same question if you actually peel the onion the yeah. question really is 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 like if you have 12 years of experience you go through an mba will you have a return on investment 
Correct. from that MBA. Now there are two ways to, to, to look at that ROI. One is to really say, hey, I'm, a, I'm someone from a family business, taken my business to a certain degree. In that case, uh, 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 you know, the, the knowledge from an MBA matters and nothing mm -hmm. else. Uh, the mm -hmm. second case, which is, is, okay, I'm going to be looking for a job post my MBA. And in that mm -hmm. case, what they're going to look for is, okay, uh, will, you, it's, will it be possible for you to find a job that, mm -hmm. uh, that will give you the ROI if you know, ROI is something that you do care about? But, but mm -hmm. the job that, would be, uh, uh, that, that essentially would do justice to your experience. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and then, I mean, essentially, in your case, you have some really, really good experience. I, I, I think um, for you, the big challenge, which is, you know, I don't think it's going to be a problem saying that, hey, uh, uh, would you be able to find a job or not? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the, the key thing would be, okay, why do you need an MBA? What knowledge component would you gain mm -hmm. from an MBA? That's the first piece. And then mm -hmm. the second thing is, uh, you'd have to be very upfront with regards to, okay, well, what's your ROI that you're looking at? I mean, is it, is mm -hmm. it, uh, for example, UCLA Anderson, I think the graduating class is what, 130k starting salary, but the, mm -hmm. the range over there is probably around uh, uh, 170, 180 to, to the lower end, about 100. So mm -hmm. does that 170 make sense from an ROI standpoint, considering mm -hmm. that the tuition is what, 74, uh, so 150k would be the tuition over there. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and if it does make sense for you, I mean, for mm -hmm. example, if you through your interview and through the application, you can prove that, hey, you can be one of those guys who earns amongst the upper end of that salary bracket. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would happily get to take you. Correct. So uh, okay. two, two years ago, was it two years ago? Yeah, 2017 is when, I was, when we visited uh, uh, UCLA Anderson. Okay. The, the oldest MBA student over there was 47 years old, full time. Okay. Okay, that gives me. But yeah, but it's still what percentage of class typically is, is people who are, let's say, between 34 and 38, 39, let's say, some that kind of bracket. But people who have more than 10 plus years of experience. So typically, tell, what tell me, I can tell you that, but tell me what should be the right question that you should be asking. Uh, the right question is what's the selectivity of people uh, yeah. in the 34 yeah. to 38 bracket and 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 b schools don't tell us this number but typically you i would say 4 to 5% would be in your in your age bracket okay uh, but if i were to guess i think from a selectivity standpoint it's going to be slightly more harsh than um, than than, uh, than than what it is so i mean if for example a uh, Kellogg has uh, eleven percent uh, selectivity for 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 the median case. For you, that would be probably about eight to be eight to nine percent. By selectivity, acceptance rate. Uh, acceptance rate, yes, yes. So it will be about eight. Okay, but yeah. but but I think the the nice thing about this being in your position, I wouldn't worry about one or the other, because mm -hmm. for people who have twelve years of experience, so think of it as this way. Engineers, five years of experience, everyone's very similar in many regards. Mm -hmm. right? But even people in finance with 12 years of experience, they're very different individuals. So, right. so it's very difficult to club them together. So it's a diversity factor, what you bring on the table, what you can add. It's, to it, the is, it is, it is, it oh, is, yes. And, and I think if you've had a very successful career and you're going there, as long mm -hmm. as you can prove what you would learn from your MB and how that would be valuable, I think that is going to be your biggest challenge. Understood. Understood. Yeah, that that's the sense I was getting here. You have to. I in my position, I should be very clearly able to articulate my long term and both my short term plan, mm. and why I need an MBA to do those. That's that's you. basically the key thing, because you post then, because if you've had a successful career, your post mm -hmm. MBA employment is not going to be very suspicious. I mean, it won't be a problem. Mm -hmm. But the thing really is, what are you going to get from it for which you're spending 150000 and and foregoing two years of worth of salary? Correct. Understood. Understood. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, I mean that was you know something, and as I said, it's it's more about reading to uh, you know sometimes you go on Google and you try and do these uh, kind of because. Uh, mm. But yeah, I get your point. Uh, nothing to be discouraged about, but I'm sure there are things which I will have to address head on yes. and clearly. It's more about that. Yeah, I mean the, the nice thing about this is. Uh, so everything has pros and cons. In your case, the pros are they're not going to be concerned about your post MBA employment. They won't be concerned about the maturity level. They would actually be looking forward to the 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 kind of inputs that you you bring into to to the class. So I think that's really really good. If you can convince them about the quality that you bring, mm-hmm. okay, and, and 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 especially the fact that you worked in the Middle East and you worked at uh, uh, you work for a company that's Singapore-based, if I understand correctly. Yes, my uh, my last job was with a Singapore-based company, and mm-hmm. uh, I was involved in the U.S., uh, Middle East, and Southeast Asia business. Okay. Uh, globally present. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, that geographic geographic part by itself mm-hmm. would would also be very interesting. No. Okay. So, so. Um, Understood. So I think for me, when I look at it, it's like you are in a very interesting place with regards to positioning yourself. Um, if you do a good job of positioning yourself to business school, showcase those things, mm-hmm. then uh, then then, and that's something which is big. Good. I mean, for I, I, for example, in your resume, uh, I'd I'd like to really on top. Uh, 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 see, like to see a bit more, a few more achievements. Okay. So for your uh, current position, the, I mean, in your current okay. position, there are there are no achievements. It yeah, talks I'm, about your role. Yeah, I was looking at uh, CC over here, promote and develop a strategy for entering an early stage space. I mean, how many have you done? No, I have actually uh, take. I was going through even the applicant lab uh, feedback on the resume or, or the 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 suggestion they have given, mm-hmm. and I am getting the sense it's not about presenting a professional resume or a job search resume. What they need is a is to see your achievements very clearly and yes. uh, something. Which, yeah, so, so, so that res- yeah. So I think let me see if I can bring up a presentation that I want. Uh, yeah. So, uh, have you seen Maria's resume webinar? Uh, not the webinar. Uh, okay. Her platform, I have gone through the section. Okay. With so I'm going to send you the recording of this webinar. So, this okay. I think for me is is the key slide. Uh, it's this is Maria, and she's really good at it. But she already says that if you think about your job resume when you apply for it, mm-hmm. they're looking at what can you achieve in the next two years. They focus on skills because skills are show what you can achieve. And a B-school resume is this. Where would you be 20 plus years? And, and, and for them, what they're looking at is what have you achieved in the short period till now? What, what traits have you, uh, have you demonstrated? Okay. Do you watch cricket? Uh, soccer, football. You watch soccer, okay. Um, so I- But I understand any analogy from cricket. I mean, okay, are you aware of cricket? I'm very aware from okay, India. Good. So. Okay, so good, good. I mean, so so if you were to really compare Sachin and, and Dhoni about 10 years back, okay, uh-huh. you're talking about 2009. Oh, okay. Um, okay uh, a selector would look at, okay, the cricket, the, the, the batting skills of both individuals, both of them are batsmen. Whereas a B school is going to look at Dhoni's captaincy, his ability to influence the performance of other people. And 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 and, and yes, the Sachin was a terrible captain. And so yeah, the well-rounded personality. No, it's and about it's not so much about yeah. It's it's about your ability to impact others. Business is about your ability to take others along with you. Okay. Right. Understood. Not not how well you know what kind of macros you know in Excel or what kind of tools you know and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. A resume is something I have to work on. I'm, I'm mm. aware of it because I've gone through uh, that. And so, yeah. So, so and, and that's one of the biggest parts, components overall in your overall application. So it's about 20 odd percent. And, and most of the times, um, 
it varies from school to school but in certain schools the interviewer will only have your resume that's the first document they will... that's okay. the interviewer will only have your resume only. Oh, yeah okay. yeah so certain schools the way they work and certain school different schools work differently but there's a group of schools that work this way where they mm -hmm. would do is they'd have a one group of individuals evaluate your essays and in your resume and then mm -hmm. they'll give just your resume to the interviewer and then okay. they'll really say okay that interview would evaluate the qualities that you have and the key achievements so what you've written in okay. the essays and what comes out of the interview needs to match understood okay understood. so that's that's why they that's why all of this is an engine and, and i don't know if maria has put put this slide in this or not but uh, uh, let me just see if I can get to one of those slides. So think of your application as this. It's a well-oiled machine. Everything should be cohesive. Yeah, this is something this is there on her platform also. She she is in fact is on her website also where she describes okay. in detail why all of these come together. Yeah, so that's something that Maria and I made together about a year and a half back or so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, so you, this is the, this is how you need to look at it. These are engines. These are gears that need to work together. Correct. Correct. And 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 so, so so yeah. So just as you go through the various modules, make sure you go back and forth and ensure that they. Yeah. Is, is the common thread. You know, yeah. Yes. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, any other question that I can answer? Uh, no, uh, I think uh, I just want to thank you guys a lot. So it's been really helpful and uh, uh, good luck. Good luck to your team and to the platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. But one of the other things that I can really say, 